Wake up, says Jeremy Grantham. The days of abundant resources and falling prices is over. Wait, first of all, falling prices? I thought everyone said inflation. The value of a dollar has crashed 96% since 1913. Uh, and I can't stand Jeremy Grantham. I, I, the guy is just a clown. But uh, I thought this was interesting, and I'm just going <laughs> to... Oh, my goodness, man. I, look, can we just acknowledge no one knows nothing? All right, that's just a fact. Anyway, so here, and it actually is not a, I've read half of this so far. It's not a bad article. Um, oh, did I give away the game here? Hopefully I did not. So let's just read this real quick. Um, uh, we have resource limitations. And I'm trying to, this guy, this old man here, I'm trying to persuade investors with interest in long term to change their whole frame of reference. To recognize that we now live in a different, more constrained world where prices of raw materials will rise and shortages will be common. Um, let's see. Uh, he talks about right here. Uh, see, statistically, the level of price rises makes it extremely unlikely the old trend is still in place. The trend of 100 years of a commodity price declining. If I'm right, we are now entering a period which, like it or not, we must finally follow President Carter's advice to develop a thoughtful energy policy and give up our carefree and careless ways with resources. The quicker we do this, the lower the cost will be. Any improvement at all in our lifestyle for our grandchildren will take much more thoughtful behavior from political leaders and more restraint from everyone. Rapid growth is not ours by divine right. And I just wonder how many plans did Jeremy Grantham have? Uh, because he's a big, he funded, this guy, Jeremy Grantham, funded ICL Imperial College of London. He's got his freaking mitts everywhere and, you know, global green freaking insanity. And yet I guarantee he's flying all over the place with his private jets. I guarantee flipping to you, dude. Because all these guys do. It's it's uh it's good to be that nomenclature. Is that what they say? Nomenclature. It's good to be king. And we ain't the king. They don't want us the king. They don't want to live a lesser life. They say that... If I'm right, we're now entering a period which, like or not, we, we, us, must follow Carter's advice to develop a thoughtful energy and give up our carefree and careless ways of resources. Oh, by the way, this is written April 2011. Commodity index from 10 years ago. This is 2013. And uh, you can see it fell, fell, fell. It's dropping, it's dropping, dropping. And then, boom, what happened there? What happened April 2020 when it just magically went up like that to May 2022? Uh, what? What happened there? It's just these guys are all, they, no one knows. I just wish, look, so we had this huge run up and, oh, wait, what happened there? Crazy. If we just go to all 50 years, you can see in this, I mean, look, the, the commodity index, yeah, 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 go to all, I don't know how far it goes back. You know, rapid rise, this is accelerating, but not not significantly, man. I mean, just not, man. I, I don't understand. And one of these reasons in 2022, of course, was lumber. But I mean, just what what is it with people saying we're always running out of money, running out of time, running out of resources? But I want to show you why. This thing drove me, drives me crazy. World population. Here's a Malthus wrote his uh, insane thing on that we're going to run out of resources because too many people in 1800. What is the population of the world? Like, I don't trust any of these. I don't, I don't trust any of them. But given what does the consensus say is the population? World population. Uh, pop, population. 19, or eight, 1780, I think is what it was. Oops. 1780. Let's take a gander, shall we? World population, 1780. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to show it there. Hold on a second. By year. Here we had in 1760, we had 770 million people in the world and we had a, a billion people in 1804. All right, so we had a we'll say uh, 850 million people here and we're running out of resources. And actually, Grantham makes a good point, which I'll share with you here in just a second, about why Malthus probably thought that in some regard. And here's where Jeremy Grantham was born, 1938. So he's a boomer. What is that a boomer? No, I don't think it's a boomer. Is it a sign? No, I don't know. What is that? What do they say? Okay, boomer. All right, so anyway, so you see, oh my goodness, look at this run up. This, oh my goodness. I hope I've trained you. I talk about this in my book. I hope I've trained you to look at this stuff with a, with a, a, a skeptical eye. Two to four million, all right? That's the same as four to eight million. This is a linear scale. This is not a log scale. It's, I just, I cannot stress this enough. So we've got a two to four, and we'll just say that's an inch. 
four to eight should be there, which would lessen this jump like that. That's why when you see like the uh, the S and P five hundred charts, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the S and P five hundred going back to nineteen twenty six, but yeah, nineteen twenty six. Look at that, not like nothing, nothing happened here. Then you had boom, boom. But you got to log it, dude. I, I cannot stress this enough. You see, it's, see, it just is going to the northeast. But if you don't, I, I, I hope if anything I can teach on this channel is to not be fooled by silliness that's not logged. I mean, just look, see the difference? Boink, 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 boink. It's the same thing. It's just shown different ways. So 10 to 100 is the same as 100 to 1,000, which is the same as 1,000 to 10,000. Here is you got 5 to 1,000. Well, that's a 100% increase, 500 to 1,000. 1,000 to 2,000 is 100% increase. 2,000 to 4,000 100% increase. You see that, how, how much further 5 to 1 goes? It goes like this, and it goes like that, and it goes like that. All right, so Grantham, he, first of all, this is not and, – and look, we've had significant population increase since 1900. I'm not going to deny that. But it's not nearly as dramatic as when you don't log, as, as, uh, if you don't log, if you just use a linear. All right, so part two of this, what drives me up the wall is, um, look, they, they've been saying for years and years and years it's going to be too many people. Paul Ehrlich, the population bomb in 1969, all these guys are freaking fake, dude. They've been saying we're going to run out of resources, we've got peak oil, the whole thing. And people say, oh, we're going to run out, we're going to run out, and we don't. Does that mean we won't? No. The question is, is oil truly developed by fossil fuels, i.e. dinosaur bones and stuff like that, carbon? Or is there some kind of replenishment of the oil? I don't think anyone knows. You know why? Because no one's dug more than eight miles deep. We don't know how it works in the inner core of the earth. We don't have any idea. And as such, you're kind of like, well, how can we keep saying we're going to run out and we never do? Is it just in, in put fear in us? And I think the answer is yes. In fact, I was reading this article the other day. I was watching this guy in my man uh, video. Norman Dodd, and uh, and he was he interviewed. He uh, investigated uh, the uh, the rise of the tax exempt organization, Carnegie's, Rockefellers, Ford's, and how they're basing control of everything. It's nuts, dude. And he was a uh, he was he was a you know he was, a, but Congress they appointed this guy to do this, and it was right around the same time as Alger his uh, witness. I'm not Alger his Whitaker Chambers witness came around, and uh, and they they got. <laughs> To, so basically, it's like, look, these guys are up to no good. Here's a Carnegie, Carnegie Endowment for World Peace. Their founding documents state this explicitly. They want collectivism and one world government. It's not debatable. It's explicit. Explicit. Anyway, apparently out one of his researchers had read a book called uh, uh, The River Runs Eastward or something like that, which they said is anti-Semitic. And, and then, of course, you know, back then... At the same time, Bill Buckley was uh, enlightened from the CIA, essentially. You know, Bill Buckley is a CIA agent to rid of us of John Birch side and whatnot on the right wing. Uh, they basically said, Norman Dodd, we're not going to allow you to go forward with your investigation because some guy in his committee had looked at a book called, I haven't read the book, but I was, I'm, hell, I'm interested now. Anything that you can't read, I want to read now for sure. Anyway, the point being was, uh, these guys, the, the the whole point was they, they literally, they focused on nuclear war, nuclear war, nuclear war, the fear, the fear, the fear. And actually, it turns out today, check this out. This is from junkscience.com. 1956 National Academy of Sciences report on radiation risk discovered to be science fraud. The article highlighted the June 19, uh, 1956 front page of the New York Times was a product of a demonstrable science fraud committed by the National Academy of Sciences. The subject report is a foundational document for the junk science as linear no threshold model LNT uh, used in re regulatory risk assessment. And he got a, they got a uh, 22 parts of video series, which I would have watched. Anyway, so it's, scientists term radiation a peril to future man. Even small dose can prove harmful to the sentence of uh, victim report states. And this is it's all fear. It's what they're peddling on fear. Nuclear war is a fear. After, after supposedly the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima that we're all going to be scared crapless of. Exposure check of all asked, curb backed, all asked, curb backed on dental and medical x-rays. All right, it's freaking nuts, dude. The report is part of a uh, survey produced by six committees of the NES, a private nonprofit organization. It's the most comprehensive U.S. effort to determine how the future of the human race might be affected by the unleashing of nuclear power. The scientists warn out all-out nuclear war conceivably could make the Earth un uninhabitable. They suggest a reasonable safety limit of exposure to radiation, which man might avoid uh, to uh, av uh, avoid undue harm to posterity. Shocking 
as surprised or expressed by one of the six groups. The Committee on, uh, on Genetics and finding that the American public is using about one third of the safety limit in medical and dental x rays. So you have a certain amount of safety, in just your dental and medical x rays were using up a third of it. But never mind the, the guys going through the moon, the, uh, what's, <laughs> the uh, Van Allen belt. Ah, we don't have to worry about that. Its members called on the medical profession to reduce the use of x rays to the lowest limits consistent with medical necessity. It also urged a national system of personal records where every American would know his total amount of exposure to radiation. It, uh, overshadowing all others because this implication for mankind was the report of the genetics panel, which is headed by Rockefeller Foundation. Shocking! It's a foundation. It was a foundation that provided the funds for the Yulong survey. Dude, it's, once you freaking see this, you can't unsee it. It's it's insane, insane. Now the other survey, oceanogra oceanography and fisheries, tests of atomic weapons can be carried out in or above. The sea level without serious damage to fisheries, says these guys. Meteorology. The evidence of a decade, while not conclusive, indicates that nuclear explosions have no effect on weather. Agriculture. Radiation may help in developing better crops, but it's not so likely to be useful in improving animal breeds. So we only have these one people, of course, they focus on that. All right, so, so again, we got Jeremy Grantham. We're all going to die. We're not going to have enough resources. All right, what is Jeremy Grantham? Not only does he overlook this right here. This is what the UN is now reporting, that our growth... All right, we're going to actually have declining population at the end of the century. Check this out. Here is the annual population growth rate. This is decelerating on freaking steroids, dudes. The annual population growth rates. And it's going to be hard. Can I make this bigger? Hold on a second. Let's see if I can't. Um, wait, a view image. Maybe I can. Yeah, right there. The, right there. The Great Leap Forward famine in China under Mao is killing around 30 million people. A reduced global population in 1958. Look at that. Great Bleed Ford, 1958. Killed right there. Killed 30 million people. And that's a good thing for people like Jeremy Grantham because there's just too many people out there. The growth rate is decelerating. And by the end of the century, it's going to be basically nothing. If it, I mean, I 100%. Too many people. So what is, uh, I was going to show you something. So with all these people and Malthus saying we're going to run out of uh, resources, interesting, the history of pricing for commodities has been incredibly helpful for the economic pro pro progress of our species. In general, prices have declined steadily, declined steadily for all the last century. We have created an equal weighted interest uh, in index of the most important 33 commodities. Um, the index shown starts 110 years ago and trends steadily downward. An apparent defiance of the ultimately limited nature of these resources. So does people not know we have limited resources and yet we have more and more people now than we did 110 years ago? So how do the prices keep going downward? Ah, crazy. I'm going to show you something. Endless oil. Forbes article. They'll never be able to get away with writing this now. Endless oil. Everybody knows that oil and gas drilled out of the earth comes from the remains of plants and animals trapped underground millions of years ago. The received wisdom so dominates our thinking that it's enshrined in the very language we use, fossil fuels. What if the whole theory is wrong, though? That's the premise of a small but passionate band of Russian and Ukrainian contrarians. What? Russians and Ukrainians get along? They argue that oil and gas doesn't come from fossils. They're synthesized deep within the oil's mantle by, or the Earth's mantle by heat, pressure, and other purely chemical means before gradually rising to the surface. This is the so-called abiotic theory of oil. Finding all the energy we need is just a matter of looking beyond the traditional basins where fossils have accumulated. And the interesting thing is, again, we haven't dug more than eight miles. No one's dug more than eight miles deep into the earth. Just a couple of years ago, the USGS identifies largest continuous oil and gas resource potential ever. And this is literally from physics.org, which isn't some freaking right wing fossil fuel thing. This is from USGS, by the way. Um, today, the U.S. Department of Interior announced a wolf, cap sh wolf camp shale and overlying bone spring formation in the Delaware Basin portion of Texas New Mexico's Permian Basin contained an estimated, estimated average of 46 billion barrels of oil, 281 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, and 20 billions of natural gas liquids, according to the assessment from the U.S. Geological Survey. The estimate is for a continuous, unconventional oil and consists of undiscovered, technically recoverable resources. I, although the USGS has previously assessed conventional oil and gas resources in the Permian Basin, this is the first assessment of continuous resources in the Del Delaware Basin. Oil and gas companies are currently producing oil here using both traditional vertical and uh, well technology and, and fracturing, hydro, uh, uh, fracking.
hydraulic uh, horizontal fracturing. The results we released today demonstrate the impact of improved technologies such as high fracking and directional derailing have an increasing the estimates of undiscovered technically recovering continuous resources. In Turkey, let's look at Turkey. Turkey announces largest ever, this is yesterday, largest ever onshore shore discovery. Turkish Petroleum has made the largest crude oil discovery on share, onshore with an estimated to hold 1 billion barrels of crude, the company said. The discovery is made in the southeastern province, whatever. whatever. <laughs> the country is also targeting natural gas independence with recent huge finds of gas in the Black Sea and the start of gas transmission from the Sakara gas field last month. In April, Turkish Energy told CNN that the volumes of natural gas that Turkey has found so far in the Black Sea were worth uh, excess of $500 billion. The huge gas fines would be enough to supply all households in the country for 35 years. I mean, dude, we've heard this so many times and no one knows what the hell they're talking about. The era of abundance is over simply for, because of government and people like Jeremy Grantham. I don't get why they have to live in so much fear, dude. It's the weirdest thing. There's a guy named Galen Windsor. He used to talk uranium. He said, oh, I, he ate uranium. And he was like uh, on the Manhattan Project or something like that. You know, does that mean uranium is, I don't know. I don't care. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to eat uranium. I'm just sitting there. They pester us with fear all the time. That we're going to run out. We're going to run out. We're going to run out. We're going to be, the abundance is over, over and over. Again, Jeremy Grant has been saying this for years. It's just been wrong. Just been wrong. I just, it's, it's freaking sickening. So to live your life in this fear of constant, like Antifa is going to get you. We're going to get nuked. Freaking Chinese are going to send armies here to, uh, what else I'm thinking from the left? Uh, there's a Nazi under, there's a Klansman under, every white guy is a, is a potential Klansman. Uh, it's just, it's insanity, dudes. I mean, the problem is, is the government regulations because the government and corporate America are aligned at the hip. Corporate America controls the government and corporate America loves scarcity because they can raise the prices. You think there's any reason why Rockefeller, <laughs> they were not keen on Tesla's energy independence stuff? Why? Oh, because they're, 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 they control the whole thing of oil and gas. You think that oil and gas companies, they like green stuff? Oh, if it limits their ability to, to, uh, to develop oil, sure, that just means they get more profits for it. Ay, 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 it's crazy. Anyway, whatever. You read these guys, I'm, I just, I get so frustrated because I'm like, when is this stuff, you know, when is it going to come true, man? I mean, wait, we haven't seen it. It's going to come true by don't fall on the government regulations. And that's the sad thing. That's the sad thing. And what can you do about it? Well, I mean, literally, if you want to get solar panels, I got no qualm with that. If you're getting solar panels without battery banks, I think you're making a mistake, 100%. I'd invest an extra 20000 bucks to get battery banks in there to actually store some electricity for days like today when the clouds are out and the sun doesn't shine. And don't forget, solar is always intermittent. It's always to it. And wind is silly. Wind is just a joke. But if you want to do your own little personal homestead with some solar, I got no qualm with that. That's a good way to establish some sort of energy independence, 100% to some degree. I mean, if you're solar, if you're grid tied, you're not off grid inherently. That's why you need battery banks. And if you're grid tied and the grid says we're shutting down, you can't just turn on your solar panels. Don't work like that. Doesn't work like that. That's where you have to have the battery bank so you can load up the electricity in your batteries to use when the grid goes down. I like that 100%. You find, find some local resource to, to buy food from, to, to learn how to just process some basic food stuff. You know, just a basic garden, dude. You know, freaking tomato plant. You know, mostly tomatoes not going to feed you enough to sustain you for years, but it'll feed you enough to sustain you for a couple of days. You know, I'm just this basic stuff that we don't have to worry about it, dude. The government's not going to, the UN's not going to come here, the jack booted thugs, and take your land. They're not going to do it. What's going to happen is the government's going to make it harder and harder for you to get by because of the, the forced scarcity. And that's why, frankly, you just better learn some basic independent skills because you are, I truly believe, I told my daughters last night. The days of globe trobbing, go trobbing, go trobbing, uh, globe trotters. Those days are coming to an end for us regular folks. So the rich people they'll do whatever the hell they want. For us regular folks, though, these days are coming to an end because it's abundance they don't like. They don't like rubbing shoulders with us freaking peons, and they're gonna do what they can to keep us from rubbing shoulders with them. The Jeremy Grantham's world. He doesn't want to, you know. Now mind, he's obviously got a private plane. He don't want to sit there with me. You know what I'm saying? I stink. I smell bad. I'm uncouth. 
I might listen to uh, people I shouldn't be listening to. You know what I'm saying? He, How dare you? How dare you listen to Owen Benjamin? Ah. Anyway. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.